Hello everybody, uh, Brad the Guitologist here and in today's video we're going to take a look at this guy. This is a, I think about a 1964 uh, Kent made by Gaiatone Americana model. Uh, the model number I believe is 564. They made a couple different versions of this Americana model which is a hollow body thin line uh, model guitar. Um, they made them with two pickups and three pickups. I think they may have also made a one pickup, but I'm not sure. No, I'll take that back. I don't think they did make a one pickup, just a two and a three. Um, this one is the natural uh, kind of mahogany finish on top. They made them also that were um, sunburst. Um, this one has had several problems and a fairly hard life. Um, and I'll show you what I mean. I, you're kind of picking this up a little bit into it. Um, this thing has been hanging on my wall for a little while, and this is one that I just pulled down and decided to go ahead and uh, make a project uh, for the moment and see if I can get sorted out. Uh, the reason it took me so long is because I didn't have any replacement uh, pickups, and I did not want to send these pickups off for rewind. Um, the pickups normally uh, look like this. And this, um, this cover just pops right off of here. And you'll see there's like a, there's like a padded, it's like a padded gold, almost gold foil kind of textured stuff in there. It's just kind of stuck inside of it. And this piece of chrome just pops right off once again. Now this one is original. Uh, underneath that chrome uh, part, you have uh, a coil. Uh, inside the coil, there is um, a bar uh, magnet. Uh, underneath the bar magnet, there is a, a plate. Let's see if I can pick that up. There's a metal plate under that. And underneath the metal plate, there is a, uh, it's kind of a tiered uh, piece of rubber. So you have a it's kind of a molded piece of tiered rubber. So what it does is it allows you to, I don't know if you can see the, it's gonna be kind of hard to see. Let me see if I can get a little better light. I'll move this one forward. Let's see if you can see a little better now. There we go. You can, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a couple little marks right here, a little indentations uh, where you can see that this thing is, gets clamped on there. And that's, that's all that holds this, this on when you put them down. These little indentations, they kind of dig into the rubber on this part. Um, you may be wondering what these extra holes are doing over here. Well, for some reason, a former owner had removed the middle pickup. Um, and they'd done something weird and funky with the pickups anyway, but they'd, they'd moved one of these pickups up to this position. I guess they thought they were trying to get like a, a neck humbucker, maybe? Uh, is what they were going for. Um, this was probably, I'm guessing, back in the days whenever people just didn't give two shits about these kind of guitars. A lot of people still don't. They think they're trash or just above trash. Um, not me, however. I, I love this kind of thing. Uh, but here's what I've done with these. I got a couple of uh, pickups <clears throat> that were from a, an early 1980s Harmony guitar that was made in Kauai. Now this was a uh, this was well after Harmony was USA made and um, the guitar that I got these pickups from they were um, Les Paul knockoffs and the pickups were like this but it was a single coil inside of a humbucker and I sold a fella um, the guitar and he uh, he had replaced the pickups uh, because he didn't like the single coil sound and he went and got some actual humbuckers and he traded me back these pickups and I uh, I looked at them and decided yeah I can probably use those actually because um, these might fit under here now what I had to do is I end up having to modify the rubber part though uh, if you'll notice um, these well, let's get that out of the way if you'll notice these uh, these windings are a lot thicker uh, than this this winding so what I had to do was actually come in here and saw off this uh, this bit of rubber um, 
And here's what, here's what they look like when you saw that rubber off. Here's the rest of the rubber that was sawed off. So basically I just removed this bit of rubber from the top of that bit of rubber. Now I probably could have gone to the automotive store and gotten some uh, gasket material and just cut another one. Uh, but I was in the middle of the night and kind of in a hurry, so I just decided to go ahead and cut cut this off um, and get get it done. Um, put the bar down inside. Now this was uh, uh, configured differently inside the other pickup, inside of this pickup. Um, the magnet was sat down flush on here, um, and this piece was sat on top of it, and then the coil was set around this piece, and the magnet was underneath. Uh, but in this case, you can see I've just put the magnet in between. Um, and I think this is going to produce a pretty good tone. Um, right now, what I'm doing is kind of deciding on a couple of different things. Um, this extra hole right here, like I said, this pickup was moved up to this position at some point, And they drilled an extra hole here. They also cut into the pit guard and removed the material. You can see here the material actually comes in and then back out. And it came in here as well, but they had to cut that out when they moved this up. So basically they rendered the pit guard um, useless. So we'll have to make another pit guard for this thing as well while we're at it. Um, but this hole right here, I've actually, you can see, um, I've, I've plugged the bottom of it with a piece of wood. I've, gl I've gone in there and uh, glued a piece uh, from underneath. We're going to fill this with some mahogany wood filler and try to just blend it in the best we can. Maybe finish over the top of it. And just kind of blend it in so it's not as obvious. Um, and then I think what we're going to have to do definitely is, is find a way that we can um, make these stay. I don't want to super glue them or anything like that. But what I'm thinking I might do is com come in here with some, uh, some hot glue on both ends. Glue it here on this side and glue it on the other side. Uh, being careful not to melt anything. But uh, I just want to dab some hot glue there so when I set this down... Um, these will have something to adhere to and they won't just pop right off. Uh, so I have to do it with this pickup and this pickup. Uh, this one's pretty much fine the way it is, so we won't have to worry about that one. But yeah, this thing was in just quite a state overall. Um, obviously, it's going to need a complete setup as well. Um, the electronics are out of it at the moment, of course, and I'm going to need to uh, rewire all of that. Here's what the electronics cavity looks like. It's got a replaced... I think I actually had already replaced this in the past when I was starting on this as a project a while back. Um, but here's the control panel and what it looks like and you've got these funky knobs. Uh, you might be wondering what these are but if you look at it closely it's kind of a stylized T and also a stylized uh, V for volume. So you got a V for volume and a T for tone. Just a really kind of 60s stylized couple of font letters there um, and then you've got on off switches for each pickup it's gonna be fairly easy to wire this thing back up that's not gonna be a problem but it's just gonna take some time um, there were some other things too that we'll probably end up getting into but the main things are we're gonna uh, fix uh, we're gonna affix these um, these pickup covers so that they don't move uh, we're gonna have to do a complete setup on the instrument uh, fill this, create a pit guard, um, and then maybe if we're lucky, we'll have a uh, we'll have a cool rocking uh, '60s vintage uh, Gaiatone guitar. Okay, in order to fill this hole and to uh, just kind of disguise these two little screw holes right here, um, I'm going to use some of this stuff. This is Timbermate wood filler. Um, I will put links in the description to any tools or um, or substances such as this that I use in this video. So if you're interested in any of this stuff, just look down uh, for links in the description below. All right, basically what you do, you just dip a little of this stuff out and you mix it up with some uh, tiny amount of water. It actually gives you a prescription for the amounts of the ratio of water to, uh, uh, to clay, whatever this stuff is, to product uh, that you're supposed to mix. And it doesn't take very much water at all. Uh, and I probably got too much water too much water in there right now so I'll probably dump some of this off but basically you just add a little bit of water mix it up and uh, then apply it to where you where you need it all right this is probably gonna be a little bit awkward to do with a screwdriver but 
Um, I'll at least get it started here and then finish it off with something a little better. But let's see if we can just at least apply it to the area and then I can kind of smush it down in there. Okay. There we go. Putty knife might might help. This would have been a little easier if I'd done this before putting those pick that pickup back in there. All right, now this stuff is, again, it's water-soluble, so you don't really have to worry so much about uh, excess or getting it where you don't need it because all you have to do, really, is just take a warm, wet rag, and the rest of it will just wipe off. Basically, all I'm trying to do at this point is just kind of um, get it down in these holes. And obviously, I don't want to scratch the surrounding finish if I can avoid it. But if I do, um, this it should any imperfection should polish right back out as well. But uh, what we'll do, we'll let this we'll let this dry, um, and this stuff will shrink up a little bit, uh, so it might create a small indentation there, and I might have to add some more to it. But we'll see. All right, the wood filler is for the most part dry now. What we're going to do is uh, just take a damp cloth and uh, rub most of this away. That's the cool thing about this stuff is I don't really have to sit here and sand all this or anything. I can basically just rub it away with a damp cloth just like that and leave the bit that I want to leave. All right, voila, there are our holes filled. Uh, I'm gonna get a little bit of finish in here um, just to just to get on top of this so you know if somebody's polishing their guitar, they can't uh, scoop all of that material out of there on accident. Um, so yeah, just a, a couple little dabs of finish and we'll be done with that part. Now let's get uh, find a solution for holding these uh, pickup covers on. Well, watchers to my channel will know I have no qualms about using hot glue. This is going to be another instance where I'm going to try to make this uh, work with some hot glue. Um, now, I'm sure after I do this, there's probably going to be a million and one other ways I could have done this. Uh, will pop into my mind, but right now, no other solution is really presenting itself. So, uh, first things first, what I'm going to do is put a little hot glue on the top here uh, just to add a little bit of cushion uh, between uh, these parts so that they don't move around in relation to one another so um, so first things first let's just get a little bit a little bit here so they don't move I don't want to melt anything or cause anything to to overheat because I sure don't want to um, burn any leads or anything like that but I'm um, just adding a little bit there to just kind of keep these components just a bit more stable uh, while they're under while they're under here do the same over here with this one All right, now that fir first bit was not that time sensitive, but this second bit is going to be. So I'm going to have to be a Johnny on the spot with this uh, cover once I get some um, once I get some glue on the sides of this thing. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to overheat this pickup in any way. I'm just trying to get uh, enough glue there uh, so that it'll have some this will have something to cling on to.
All right, now obviously I've got some overflow of glue here, um, and I will take care of that momentarily. The good thing about hot glue is that it's pretty easy to pretty easy to clean up. While we're at it, I thought we might uh, measure the resistance <clears throat> on these pickups. Uh, this bridge one is 5.5K. Uh, .5 uh, that's, of course, one of the new ones that I've installed. Let's see, where's the other ones? Alright, this one should be the neck. And it's about 5.5K as well. Now here's our original uh, middle pickup. And it is 6.1K. So uh, the middle pickup might in end up being just a tad bit hotter than the other two. But they were very close. Very, very close. So I'm, I'm happy with the results. All right, we have the pickups and everything all wired up now, and uh, we can test it out. Okay. I think all these are in the off position. Okay, that one's working. That one's working. And that one's working. 